and the topic. Keep your eyes on him. I want to give you a quick life lesson, some game, if you will. Before you connect with anybody in life, you need to make sure you know them. Before you follow anybody in life, you make sure that you know them. I want to give you something that can help you to practice this, whether you are a student, a worker, an athlete, or what have you. Check the fruit before you follow. Tell somebody you need to check the fruit before you follow. Yeah, think about it. When you go grocery shopping before you buy that watermelon, before you get that apple, that grape, you're you going to check it out, make sure it's not damaged, it's not messed up before you put it in your basket and you take it home. Well, the same principle you should apply when it comes to who you associate with. You don't follow anybody until you check that fruit out. Jesus had to tell his disciples, it's some folk that you just need to leave alone. Because if you follow them, you're going to end up in a ditch. Y'all ought to help me tell somebody, say, check the fruit before you follow. Before you give out that number, you need to check that fruit out. Before you call them your friend, you need to help me out. Check the, check the fruit out. Before you accept that ring and say, I will, you need to check out the fruit. Y'all mighty slow. Tell somebody, check the fruit before you follow. In our text, the main character is a man named Jehoshaphat, and he is a great example for young men and young women to follow in our day and time. Though Jehoshaphat lived thousands of years ago, his fruit, his example still speaks to us. He's still relevant in our day and time. Somebody shout Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, young people, he was a leader. Specifically, during his day, he was the king of Judah. He was a leader in his time, and he was the king of, of Judah. Some of you are leaders, whether formally or not. Whether you're in YLT or not, you're still a leader amongst your peers. I want to encourage you to be a good leader. Be somebody that's worthy to be followed. Because you can be a good leader or you can be a bad leader. And like Jehoshaphat, I want you to be a good leader. Tell somebody, don't go bad, go good. That's right. Be, be, be and remember the example that we're going to learn from Jehoshaphat. So let's look at some of his fruit because we just don't need to read and hear about Jehoshaphat. We need to look at his life and then apply what we learn to our life. Y'all still with me? Second Chronicles chapter 17. Y'all hurry up and scroll there. Second Chronicles 17 and verse number three gives us a good lay of the land about Jehoshaphat before we deal with our main text. Because, again, if we're going to talk about him, we need to make sure he worthy of being followed. All right. Second Chronicles 17 and three speaks about Jehoshaphat. It says now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father, who? David. David. He did not seek the Baals. All right? So when you consider this verse, he was a good example. Jehoshaphat was a one God man. Jehoshaphat was a one God man. He was an upright man. He was a righteous man. He served the true 
and the living God. He didn't have other gods in his life, specifically such as Baal. In fact, he was so true to God, young people, that when he took his reign, one thing Jehoshaphat was known for was restoring the people of God back to the Lord from whence they left. He was known for being a witness to his peers to say, hey, y'all need to come back to the Lord. I serve the true and living God and you should also. What a good example for college students and teenagers and young adults in our day and time. You should live in such a way to where your life persuades others to come to the Lord. Look, look, I'm saved and if I can do it, you can do it also. If he can keep me off the weed, he can keep you off the weed. If he can keep me from lying, he can help you not to lie. Y'all real slow on this morning. You ought to be being a witness to your peers on your cheerleading squad, in the band, on your job. People ought to be able to look at the light in your life and desire to serve the same God that you serve. Is something wrong if you blending in with everybody else? Is something wrong if you doing like everybody else is doing? It's time for them real trendsetters to stand up on your college campus, on your high school, and be like Jehoshaphat. Try to bring some folk back to the Lord. Oh, when was the last time you witnessed to somebody? When was the last time you prayed for somebody? When was the last time you invited somebody to church? Not getting too much response, but I know I'm telling the truth. Somebody say, be a good example. Serve the true and living God and persuade others to do likewise. Persuade others to know Jesus just like you do. If I'm right about it, somebody say, he right about it. Yeah. Second thing about Jehoshaphat that's noteworthy, young people, is his name. Jehoshaphat's name means Yahweh or God executes judgment. Jehoshaphat understood what we need to understand, that our God is sovereign. Our God has the final say. It does not matter what a doctor tells you about your health. God's word has the final judgment. The doctor may say one thing, but God's word says by his stripes, you were healed. You need to be like Jehoshaphat and understand my God executes judgment. It ain't up to the doctor. It's up to my God. It does not matter what a teacher may try to prophesy on you. That's negative. You serve a God that wish above all things that you might prosper and be in health even as your so does prosper. Y'all ought to help me say, my God has the final say. He executes judgment. God does what he want to do. And he does so according to his word. He does so according to his word. I'm not going to go there, but check out on your spare time. Psalm 75, 6 and 7, and it talks about how God executes judgment, young people. Y'all still with me? He says, exhortation or promotion does not come from the east nor the west. God is judge. He picks one up and he puts another down. God do what he want to do. If God said he going to bless you, guess what he going to do? He going to bless you. If God say a person is cursed, guess what they are? <laughs> They curse. If God open a door, no man can shut it. If God shut a door, no man can what? Can open it. God has the final say. He's sovereign. He run it all. He is in complete control. Am I right about it? 
and the final thing we need to understand about Jehoshaphat when we consider this verse, notice it says that Jehoshaphat walked in the former ways of his father, David. Now, David was not his natural father. Jehoshaphat's father, if I remember correctly, was a man named Asa. But David was his patriot. David was the man of God that set the example for kings. And the Bible says Jehoshaphat followed his example. And because God does not change young people, God expects his people to follow the right example. In God's house, he has set it up for us to imitate the shepherd as the shepherd imitates Christ. How many are with me? He followed the right father. He followed the right Example. Likewise, God does not want you to follow the examples of the world. God does not want you to follow the latest trendy celebrity. No, God has prescribed for us to follow his shepherds as they follow Christ. You may not dress like me, but you need to think like me. If I'm truly your pastor, you may I may not use some of the latest terms that they use, but you still need to talk like me. If I'm your pastor lit, they don't even say lit. I may use lit, but you may not choose to use lit. You may say, hey, it just hit different. But whatever the case, as long as what we saying lines up according to the scripture, that's what we need to do. Y'all still with me? But then when it comes to our behavior, you, you imitate your shepherd's behavior as he imitates Christ. Don't take on the spirit of the world. Take on the spirit of your, of your shepherd. And sometimes this is where the battle comes through because many young people follow the example of the world. And that's not what God wants. We need to be like Jehoshaphat and follow the right example. Amen. Am I right about it? So was Jehoshaphat worthy of us following? Based just upon these few noteworthy traits that I have talked about this morning. Y'all going to talk back with me or not? Is he worthy of being followed? All right. And so that brings us to our few verses in 2 Chronicles 20 that illustrate a very important time in Jehoshaphat's life that's also relevant to young people in our day and time. And when you look at these few verses, there's a few lessons in these verses that I want to deal with. And then we're going to be done. Y'all with me? All right. Lesson number one is found in verse number one. Verse number one, as I remind you, says it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Here you got this man who walking with God, but he got enemies that are coming to do battle. First lesson, young folk, in life, though you are young, you're going to have enemies that show up in your life to do battle. You're going to have opposition in this life. Everybody is not going to like you. Everybody is not for you. Everybody don't want to see you get ahead. Some folk don't want to see you start. They want to see you still on the bench. 
Some folk on your job don't want you to get more hours. Some people in your family don't want you to do better than them. Notice the language of the text, young people. They came to battle. They ain't coming to play. They're not coming to be your friend. When an enemy shows up in your life, they're trying to consume you, overtake you, conquer you. Don't want you to be happy. Coming to keep you depressed. Coming to keep you hooked on drugs. Don't want you to be a holy young woman. No, enemies come to keep you hoeing. They coming. And some are already here, but tell somebody, say, enemies come to do battle. There are enemies that want young couples to divorce. You think these problems showing up? No, they showing up to try to make you get out the will of God. Enemies. Trying to keep you broke. Matter of fact, let me just take a quick poll because y'all ain't giving me no response. How many know you got some enemies? Whether seen or or unseen. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes enemies can have your same last name. Got the same last name. And you would think because we family. <laughs> you know those say family that do certain things together, stay together. But sometimes your biggest enemies can be in your own, in your own family. Young people, when you recognize that an enemy is attacking you, you gotta fight. You gotta do something so that enemy doesn't conquer you. What is wrong with you to allow an enemy to just come up and destroy the marriage you say that God initiated. Won't even do what needs to be done. I'm just going to let it go in a decline. You've been known for having A's, B's. How you going to let what you're going through just cause your GPA? Just a decline and not do nothing about it. Yeah. Not do nothing about it. What's wrong with you? It's just like if I pulled somebody out the crowd right now and I just, just kept hitting you on the head and you just stood there and didn't do nothing. Most of us would be like, what? is wrong. Matter of fact, who want to be an example? Do I have any takers that can, can help me give this illustration? Let me just hit that head and you just standing there. First lady? <laughs> Amani? I got anybody? Mullins, you ready? <laughs> you just don't let an enemy come and get the best of you. You don't do that. You can only cry so much. You can only complain so much. At what point do you stand up for yourself? Has anybody in here ever let their enemies get the best of them? By a show of hands. Let, let's, let's just take a look. Quick look. Yeah. Mm -mm. You got to be like Jehoshaphat. You don't let no enemy. Now look at the text. He had more than three. 
More than three coming at one time. Moab, Ammon, and then look, look at this, and others besides them. He had plenty of enemies coming against him all at one time. In life, young people, sometimes it's like you, it's one thing after another. It's, it's just like time you get this under control, here comes something, here comes something else. By the time you get these two under control, here comes something else. And if you are not in the place that you need to be mentally, spiritually, you'll break down. You'll give up. You'll backslide. But that ain't the case with Jehoshaphat. That's why he is such a good example. Verse 3. Y'all still with me? And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek who? The Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Notice lesson number two. He feared and set himself to seek the Lord. When you are under attack, young people, when you're going through things in your body, if you're married, in your marriage, in other areas, in your emotions and so forth, remember Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat feared or got in worship mode. You got to flip the switch. When you recognize that you are being attacked in different areas of your life, you got to go in worship mode. You, you got to shift gears. You, you got to go from one level to another level. The Bible says that Jehoshaphat feared. He began to get in worship mode. His mind was, what's the will of God? Lord, what do you want me to do? If I'm going to come out of this, if I'm going to defeat this, it's going to have to be your way. And how many know God's way is the best way? Tell somebody God's way is the best way. Yeah, he feared. He began to say, if anybody can help me, it's my sovereign God. If anybody can heal me, it's my God. If anybody can make a way out of no way, it's my God. If anybody can cause it to go from better to worse, it's my God. If anybody can cause me to go from broke to prospering, it's my God. If anybody can cause me to go from sick to healed, it's my God. It's my God. He went into worship mode. And that's what you have to do. Go into worship mode and start fearing the Lord. Lord, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to think? What is it you want me to say? Don't nut up. Don't panic. No. Go into worship mode. Somebody say worship mode. Look at, look at this, Psalm 34 and 9. Y'all stay with me. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who what? Y'all didn't read that right. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those who, if I fear God, whatever's lacking, he going to make sure there's no more lack. What is that? Whatever is insufficient, he going to make sure it's supplied because I'm fearing him. Wherever I'm hurting, it's going to be some healing when I'm fearing him. That's why it's important when, when you're going through things in life, young people. Fear God. So whatever is lacking can start being supplied. I love that verse. Psalm 115 and 13 in part says, He will bless those who fear him, fear the Lord, both small and, and great. See, it don't matter how young you are, if you fear God, it's a blessing in it. It don't matter what your age is or your lack of experience. If you fear God, he going to make sure that he gets his hand in the midst of, of what you're going through. He will bless those who, who fear him. 
man, when them sinuses start attacking and your head hurting, that's just a minor problem. But start right there. Lord, I got this headache. What do I need to do? Lord, these sinuses tripping. And watch God bless you in the midst of that. Lord, me, me and my spouse, we, we going through some things and it's not all her fault and it's not all my fault. We just ain't where we need to be. What I need to do, watch God come in the midst and bless that thing. Those who fear the Lord, he'll bless. Now y'all sitting there like y'all don't want the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no, no sorrow. Who in here can afford to miss a blessing from the Lord? I can't afford that. Matter of fact, who in here wants every blessing that God has for you? It don't matter if you're in the church or outside the church. Then we have to make sure that we fear him. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He feared God, so he was setting himself up to be blessed of the Lord. Even though he was going through some things, he was setting himself up. Set me up, Lord. But I got to fear him. But it not only says he feared him, young people, he set himself to seek the Lord. He didn't panic. He kept his poise. Didn't lose his cool. How many in here sometimes when you get to going through different things, sometimes you panic a little bit? You start talking, thinking, and doing things you shouldn't, you shouldn't do. Well... I need something to take the edge off so you go grab a vape pen. You ain't set. You looking for vaping to calm your nerves? When the Bible says he got some peace that surpasses all understanding? No, you better set yourself. Don't panic. Don't reach for no cigarette. Don't reach for no vape pen. Don't reach for no weed. You ain't got to do that. Set yourself. Don't you panic and do what the world do. You, you got to grab what God wants you to grab. You got to keep your cool, so to speak. Every argument don't need, don't, don't need the result and you just leave in the house. Keep your cool. You got to learn how to argue and then say, well, what are we eating for dinner tonight? <laughs> keep your cool. You sit down, you're mad, you may not say nothing. but you're still together. You're cleaving and you ain't leaving. See, the two got to cleave and not, and not leave. But if every time you have a disagreement and you leave, you ain't set. You ain't set. Where you going, mama house? You ain't set. You're supposed to be over here with your good thing. Set down somewhere even though you mad. We done had plenty of upset days with me and my spouse because the two have to become one even when they in disagreement. I may be upstairs, she may be downstairs, but we in the same house. And eventually, you get back closer the way you need to be. This ain't boyfriend, girlfriend. You know, you get mad at somebody and boyfriend, girlfriend, you say, I don't need this. <laughs> Am I right about it? You got to set yourself. You don't freak out and panic when you get to going through things. It may shake you for a minute, but you just don't break down and act like a sinner. You don't go back to drinking just because you got little problems now. You don't do that. You don't stop coming to church just because you're going through a little something, something. You know, some saints like that. They get to going through things and they be like, man, I ain't going to church. You ain't set. You're losing your poise. All out of whack. Even when God is not doing for you, young folk, what you want him to do, when you want him to do it, you still got to keep your poise. You still come to service. You still bring your offering. 
You still have prayer. You still worship. You, you don't panic. You set yourself. See, immature people, when they don't get their way, they cry. How many in here have ever had to babysit or you got a younger sibling? They want the remote, but you got the remote. And you like, no, no. And they, they just pitch a fit. They just pitch a fit because they can't get the remote. You know there's some folk in here like that? God got the remote. And he determines what will be done. But sometimes we want that control. But God ain't going to give up his control. He's sovereign. And so we have to set ourselves and say, well, Lord, if this is how you want it to be, so be it. And that takes something. Have your parents ever put you on restrictions and you didn't agree with them limitations? Why do I have to be home at 10 o'clock? Here I am. I'm 17. Why I got to be home at 10 o'clock? Can't I come home at 1 o'clock? And they tell you, you can. <laughs> Set yourself. And that's what, that's what he does. Look at somebody and say, you got to set yourself. Matter of fact, jump to your feet and tell two folks, say, fear the Lord and set yourself. Y'all didn't say that right. Say, fear the Lord and set yourself. All right. Verse 12. Verse 12. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That's what I love. He kept his eyes on God. He kept his eyes on God. Didn't have the strength. At the time, didn't have direction, but they said, Lord, we're keeping our eyes on you. I'm not going to lose focus. I'm going to keep my eyes on you and keep my ears open. Young people, don't lose your focus when you have challenges in life. Keep your eyes on the Lord. When you get to dealing with the hardships of life, you have to make sure that your focus is in the right place. Amen. When he talks about his eyes, young people, it has to do with how he's thinking. See, when you get to going through things in life, one thing that the mind will try to do is start thinking strange. But Peter said, think it not strange concerning fiery trials. And I'm telling you, there are going to be some things you go through in life, young people, to where, man, it'll it, it just deal with your mind. But remember, Jehoshaphat, keep your focus. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. How many folk in here drive by a show of hands? You, you drive and um, you get that notification on your phone and, and no, you know you shouldn't be looking at that phone while you're driving. Let's just say hypothetically, you looked at the phone while you were driving. Have you ever noticed when you look at that phone, yeah, you, <laughs> you go off to one side or or the other, and if you're looking too long, you, you forget about the road until you hear that man, 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 man. You be like, oh Lord, let me get, let me get back over. I done lost my focus. You about to wreck. The same principle 
when it comes to life. You can be dealing with difficult things in life, and if your focus is not on the written and revealed word, you might crash out. You might crash out. You lose your focus and start looking at and thinking about what's wrong, you're going to crash out. You're going to crash out. Just like in that car, you look at that notification, and then the car begins to swerve and go off the road. Same principle. Same principle. And some of us in here, you done crashed out before because you lost focus. But see, now it's too much on the line. You got more on the line. Can you afford to crash out where you are right now in life? Can you afford to crash out? Can you afford to crash out and that insurance go higher? Can you afford to crash out and lose your scholarship? Lose your job? Lose the trust that someone has in you? Can you afford that? Is it worth it? So you got to keep your focus. You got to keep your eyes on him. Now, remember the text, Jehoshaphat, he ain't had the strength, nor did he have the instruction. But his eyes was upon the Lord. He realized his sovereign God was his source. As long as we stay in God's will, he going to help us. He going to help us in the midst of what we go through. Whatever you go through, as long as you just stay in God's will, he going to help you. What do we say? The best and the safest place to be is in God's, is in God's will. Am I right about it? So Jehoshaphat got all these folk with him. They in church. They praying. They fasting. They just like, Lord, you better help us. We got all these enemies coming against us. And then finally, the last lesson is what I want you to realize is what God does for young people that keep their eyes on him. The Spirit of God will step in and do what he was sent to do, which is guide us into all true. They are in the assembly in God's house, and the Spirit of the Lord falls on Jehaziel and begins to use him to give them instruction. And the Lord tells them, look, you ain't going to have to fight. The battle is not yours. It's mine. Now, when you continue to read, he, te- he gives them further instructions. He says, look, just go to, the, go to the battle, do this, do that, and then you're going to see your enemies destroyed before you. God does not change. Young people, God will talk to you directly and, and indirectly. But he does it for those who keep their eyes on their sovereign God. Sometimes it seems like he late, but he really on time. Sometimes it seems like he don't know what he's doing, but he does. He causes all things to work together for our good. I want to encourage somebody today, keep your eyes on the Lord. The Holy Spirit is going to guide you. He's going to tell you what to do. Some of us, he done already told us what to do. And he's going to have to bring it back to your remembrance. Because for whatever reason, when he told you the first time, you didn't follow through. And so the Holy Spirit is so powerful, he'll bring things back to your remembrance and say, look, just do this right here. And and that's how God is. Before he give further instructions, you got to do step one first. Ain't no need of trying to get to step three. Just do step one first. Then go to step two, three, and so forth. But when we keep our eyes on him, the spirit of God is going to tell us what to do. It's just like right now. Sometimes while the preacher is speaking, the Holy Spirit be talking to somebody that's listening, and he's telling them what to do. But then sometimes you go home and you be prayerful throughout the week and then the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Or you'll be driving in your car, meditating and praying. He'll speak to you then. 
or somebody will be talking to you and they don't even realize it, but God using them to tell you what to do. What to do. My sheep know my voice and the strangers they will not, they will not follow. For instance, this week, God spoke this to me. Told me what to teach y'all. Studied, prayed, so forth, prepared. And then the final words that the sister was saying this morning on the praise team confirmed the verse that we were going to. Yeah, confirmed the same verse that we were going to. I said, thank you, Lord. He'll speak to you directly and, and indirectly. But you have to keep your eyes on him. Get your eyes off of the problems. Get your eyes off of what you can and can't do and focus on his will. Focus on his word. And that takes something. Boy, that takes something. How many have ever been guilty of just looking at what you can and can't do instead of what God can do? And the Bible says with men, things are impossible, but with God, all things are, are possible. You got to get your eyes back on him and keep them now. Keep them now. Keep them on the Lord. And he's going to do just what he did in the scripture. He's going to guide into all truth. And truth is where we want to be because truth protects and it prospers. I said truth is where we want to be because truth does what? Protects and it and it prospers. How many understand how to keep your eyes on God? Let's give God a hand clap. I'm going to stop right there. Keep your eyes on him. Not on this, that, and the other. Just keep your eyes on your sovereign, on your sovereign God. Because what he says is how it's going is going.